Rome, the Eternal City, the City of Seven Hills, the capital of arguably the greatest empire in all of human history. But call it whatever you'd like. One thing is for sure, there's truly no place like Rome. friends. I'm your host, Eric Buckmeyer, and this is An American's Guide to Travel. This is my first installment. Uh, I hope you guys really dig this video, and you'll be coming back for more because I do intend to keep producing more and more of these videos that it's my intent to inspire you all to travel because I have an undying passion for travel. Uh, Wonderlust certainly has gotten the best of me. Um, started about four years ago, actually right here in Rome, Italy, where it all began. Uh, so I thought, why not? When I first, when I want to make these videos and I want to inspire everyone to travel through an American's perspective, why not start where it all began for me? And for you, you know, it will be other cities, but there, maybe it's a little bit biased, but. I think there is no better city to start off in than Rome, Italy. It's the, the food, the people, it's so incredible. There's so much to see, so much to do, uh, and so welcoming for an American audience here in, in Italy. So um, without further ado, let's, uh, let's get out, let's get out of this apartment and um, let's hit the town, okay? Andiamo, let's go. Not only the most efficient and cost-effective way to get around the city, but public transportation is the best way to see Rome. It's on these trams, subways, and buses that you will feel the Roman culture. For our first stop, we'll skip past the historic center and head right across the Tiber River. Don't worry, we'll get to all that touristy stuff later. Ah, Trastevere, the Bohemian district of Rome. The personal favorite of mine. This once neglected neighborhood is now an expensive hipster paradise. Sort of like the Williamsburg, Brooklyn of Rome. But Tarastevere has not lost its luster for cool. There is so much greatness to discover here. Walking down medieval cobblestone roads, you'll come across a bar. Inconspicuously located with a name roughly translating from Roman dialect to what the f are you doing here? Ake sete venuti a fa. I met my friend Josh to get his take on Rome. Ake sete venuti a fa. We're in a great bar, right in the heart of Rome, right in Trastevere, which is you know right off the river, right by the central storage in a great historic area of Rome. And why not speak to someone who is a cultured individual who really knows what he's talking about when it comes to travel? And I like to call him my best friend, even though it's been a couple of years. But uh, we're we're uh, really convening with a couple of groups. So why are you ultimately happy that that you chose Rome? And it was it was one of the greatest decisions I ever made. But what kept me here was the fact that. Uh, all my life, growing up in the States, in my, when I was in Miami, even though Miami has a big Hispanic uh, population and everything, you know, I was always regarded as like the particular one out of my friends because my father's from Venezuela, my mother's from Italy, and I was raised in the US. So I always felt that like it was strange that I was so international and had two passports and no one else did. 
So, the funny thing about Rome was when I got here, all the people that go to school here speak more languages than I do. I mean, people from Africa, from Eastern Europe, from Russia, from Western Europe, from the States, from South America, Latin America. To really experience a place, it's not just going to the Vatican, it's not just going to the Castle of San Angelo, it's not just doing the tourist shit. It's getting to know the people of the city where you are. When you're exposed to uh, different cultures, different ways of life, different people, it's good. You know, it makes you more makes you around, it makes you uh, uh, understand how other people behave. And understand how you know what what makes Europe so particular, so interesting. It has made me mature a good amount because um, being here by myself, especially you know, I've had to learn to live on my own and uh, handle things on my own. Especially being in a foreign country where I didn't know the language when I first got here. The thing I really got from here was just the exposure, the exposure to places that I would have never been exposed to or people that I would have never met if I would have just stayed in the U.S. Overall, I have to say that, for sure, one of the best decisions I ever made in my life, by far. Rome has something for everyone. Thriving city that never sleeps? Check. Romantic tranquility? Check. Strong cultural identity? Check. Jaw-dropping attractions. Check. Best damn food around. Check. Everywhere you turn, there's beauty in this city. It's as if you're living inside the canvas of a continual portrait. So it's no wonder why many students come to Rome to study the arts. I sat down with my friend Christina to find out why she chose Rome. So why, so why did you come, why did you come to Rome then? What, what uh, well, I came to Rome because I always wanted to study arts, okay. and so Rome is a perfect place. For me. And um, my parents kind of weren't supportive, but I, they wanted me to study law, and so I went to London after high school. I went to study law. I was there for a year and a half, and then I decided, okay, this is not for me. I have to do my own thing. And then um, I decided to come to Rome. And kind of living my dream right now before I didn't have the chance to do what I love so I'm, I'm very I'm very happy like to be here I just feel like Rome and Italy in general is a very welcoming place I've been here many times and I always loved Rome but living here is something different I don't have a certain place that I want to stay I always want to go to new places where I've never been see new people, new cultures, experience new things which make me a better person because I grow with a, with a new experience, people always grow. So that's why I always want to travel, I'm like a gypsy, <laughs> I love traveling. When you, when you always travel, it opens your mind, it opens, like, it broadens your perspective. Not only like because of the arts, but in general Europe is filled with history. So I think like as they say, like to understand your present, you need to understand your past first. So 
like what you learn in school in Rome, you get the chance to see like in in real life. I would, I would suggest to uh, really experience the the cultures because sometimes when people go on a vacation, they just tend to, tend to stay in a hotel, and it's like an enclosed community. It's not the real feeling of the culture. They don't experience that. So I would definitely suggest to go even on your own and to experience the city, not just stay in certain areas. Go wherever, get lost in the city. And that's when you're gonna find the, the beauty of the city and of traveling. All right, here comes the food montage, people. Foodies out there, you think I'd leave you hanging? This is Rome, after all. Cue the gastronomic seduction. This is what Italians describe as la dolce vita, the sweet life. It just doesn't get better than this. Mamma mia! Brace yourself for a food gasm. No Roman vacation is complete without a stop to the oldest gelateria in Rome, Giolitis. With several flavors to choose from, there's a little piece of frozen heaven here for everyone's taste. Now that we've stuffed ourselves, a great way to shake off that food coma is to just sit back at a cafe, in a piazza, and people watch. I did just that with my friend Fares. 
And well, let me put it this way, it sure didn't disappoint. My name is El Sheikh Faris Sheikh Musa. If it's too confusing, you can just call me Faris. Um, I'm from Lebanon, from Beirut. I've been in many other places in the world. I chose this city not only because it's an ancient, beautiful city, but because of the beautiful people of it. When you come here, you feel they're distant because they're afraid, you know, you're from a different culture. But when you know them well, you get into their hearts. You get, you'll be like a family over here. You know, you will really like staying here because everyone will be like very close to you. Not only friends, but very close friends. Everyone, you know, from the supermarket, under the bakery, wherever, they will all be your friends. And this is what I like over here. Wherever you walk, everyone salutes you in a very nice Italian way. Buongiorno, ciao. Come stai? Bene, tu? Eh, bene. Sei contento? Mangi la pizza? Sì. You happy? Oh, of Here course. Here you are, pizza. <laughs> Grazie. <laughs> you don't live by your own. Even if you don't know anyone, they become friends fast and they love the people. Uh, this, this nice person is, this guy is stuck somewhere. <laughs> it's nice, a lot of action, you know, happening, it's not all, um, it's not boring, it's very nice. For my experience, four years here in Rome, the good place to eat is not, it's not the place where you see archives or the touristic places, you know, beside the Colosseo, beside the Pantheon, the big fancy restaurants. Don't eat over here. The expenses, you're not good. You can just ask an Italian, or you can you can go around in Rome while walking. It's a very nice city, and you can find a lot of people standing waiting to enter this restaurant. It means it's, it's a good one. Um, if they're standing in line, then they're not Italians. You should go where people are not standing in line. So people gathering around, you know. Because they don't, Italians do not know how to stand in line. So wherever you see, you see people standing just around, then it's a good restaurant because it's Italians going there because they know the best restaurants. Good luck. Far gone the days of the triumphant parades, as I walk down these ancient streets, I try to imagine these massive processions. These civil celebrations were in honor of the Roman Empire's military successes. Here you'll find some of the most historic structures in all of Rome. Built over 2,000 years ago, it takes your breath away. Think back to when you were 13. Right. These inspiring attractions would have made the preteen in you appreciate its wonder. But there's more to Rome than its historic landmarks. Nowadays, it's a cultural melting pot. After all, when you visit Rome, it's the people here who you will remember most.
Italians and Romans in particular are very hospitable people. So it's no wonder my friend Slimani found himself right at home here in the Eternal City. My name is uh, Ottoman Slimani, Ottoman like from the Ottoman Empire. That's where my name comes from. And um, um, I've actually uh, lived in Tangier, uh, Morocco, which is a country that is, you know, really diverse. We've been colonized by Spain and France, so we have that European uh, touch in our culture. And we're very uh, internationally oriented. So traveling is, is for me, is something that you must do, you know? Because you'll, uh, if you don't travel, you don't really see what the world is about. And in my case, I've had the, the, the chance to travel to a lot of uh, countries. Uh, and I've never seen anything so special like Italy, especially Rome. Uh, Rome is definitely unique. Uh, just look around and you can see that. You have the answer for yourself. It's history. Every single step you take, you just witness history. And the people are really, really, really friendly and uh, unique. I came to Rome because I've always admired the uh, uh, Italian lifestyle. If you come to Italy, you're going to understand what family is. The real definition of family. Because uh, Italians, you know, they display that to perfection. Here in Italy, you'd see uh, a 40 year old man living with his parents. You know? Here in Italy, again, you'd see uh, people without jobs and yet they're happy, you know, enjoying the simple things of life. And that's what many people, you know, forget in, in hard times how to enjoy the simple things of life. For some people, if they lose a job, that's just the end of the world. But here in Italy, no. If they lose a job, they're happy, you know, nothing, nothing can take that smile off their faces. So just take a risk, go to somewhere you've never been to, and enjoy it. Ciao ragazzi, ci vediamo, a dopo! This travel story would not be complete without recommendations from a native. So I met my friend Giulio to put a bow on this adventure and have him drop some Roman knowledge. Ciao a tutti amici, my name is Giulio Bartolomucci. I'm from Rome, Italy. Um, but I've lived abroad for nine years of my life. Um, when I was eight, we moved to uh, Colombia, Bogota where we lived there for six years, then lived in uh, New York City, where I went there for high school. As of college, I decided to come back to Rome because I felt it's, where, uh, it's the place where um, I needed to be since um, I'm a Roman native. I've traveled quite a lot in my life and I truly believe that um, traveling 
which is honestly push you forward compared to other people. If you guys get the chance, you should definitely see the world, but especially Rome. Rome is such a, a magical, diverse uh, city. You know, we have um, several international organizations, UN agencies, the Vatican. This made Rome such um, a culturally diverse city. You could truly meet people of any nationalities. Um, also, the Italians are quite loving people. They really do care about you and where you're going. And they're not just trying to rip you off. Each morning when you, you'll come, you'll see uh, you'll have a, a cafe at the bar. The bartender is really going to care about what you um, do during your day and he's going to give you tips. You're not just a number here. You're, you get treated like the human being you are and get the respect you deserve. I suggest the first thing you do while you're here would be to go down to the first bar you see and order the typical Roman breakfast. That would be cappuccino and cornetto. Best way to start off your Roman day. When it comes to, uh, to lunch, Rome is no joke. I suggest you to try our dishes. Roman first course dishes would be carbonara, amatriciana, spaghetti aglio olio e peperoncino. For second course dishes, we have to try coda alla vaccinara, la pagliata, and saltimbocca alla romana. Also, you should never forget to try suppli, which is a Roman specialty. They're fried rice ball with mozzarella, and they usually come before eating a pizza. As you guys know, pizza in Italy is an extremely big deal. Every city makes pizza in their own way, and they tend to uh, be different from a region, from region to region. An example of this would be to notice the difference between Roman and Neapolitan pizza. Uh, Roman pizza is famous for its thin crust, while Neapolitan pizza is famous to be thicker and to have more tomato on it. Cut that thing. My favorite thing about Rome is that even though being the capital of Italy, a metropolis, it has a provincial taste to it. Let me explain. You truly never know, you could run into anyone during your day. A friend you haven't seen in years, a family member, even an ex-girlfriend, and it's just something so um, unique. It kind of gives you the feeling that you're living in a little town, but yet you have everything a big city has to offer. My advice to anyone coming here for the first time would just be leave your map at home. Remember the three, those three or four main focal points of Colosseo, Piazza del Popolo, Piazza di Spagna, Via del Corso, and go see those, the Vatican. But don't forget to just get lost. Just walk, walk, walk. Because that's how you fully and truly appreciate the beauty of our city. You could just walk anywhere in a new little vicolo, which is vicolo in Italian, it's a little side street see this gorgeous painting or a gorgeous statue of the Virgin Mary and it's just something that will leave you breathless. My advice to you guys which is leave your maps at home and walk. The beauty of Rome is that every day you truly discover something new. About a week ago I was sitting at a cafe by the Colosseum, my neighborhood where I live, and uh, I heard some tourists talking about this underground church. So I asked the waiter, because he was giving directions, what this church was all about, because I've never even heard of it. He told me to go make the first right, then go left. I followed his uh, instructions, and I found this new, to me, new underground church. And it was just magical. I could not believe I hadn't seen it in nine years. I was living in the neighborhood. Your decisions, like daily life decisions, could truly affect 
your day, if you decide to go left instead of going right, you're gonna run into something completely new. Whether it's a new museum or a new church, a new monument, anything. It's just something that truly gets to you and makes you realize what a privileged person you are to be able to walk around these streets. Every time I watch, I look at the Colosseum itself, I just find it unbelievably, you know, um, it's unbelievable how something built by, um, in the 70s DC by the Emperor Vespasiano could still be standing. To me it's just something insane. Keeping up with the ancient reputation this city has, it's truly a place full of secrets. Secrets that are not on old guidebooks and that not many people know. There is a park called Il Giardino degli Aranci, the Garden of Oranges. It's this park facing the entire city, giving you a breathtaking view of the city. And you're surrounded by these trees with oranges. Next to this garden, there is a door with a keyhole. If you look through the keyhole, you're gonna have a perfect view of the St. Peter's Stone. And trust me guys, seeing it in person is the most breathtaking experience ever. But then again, this is just one of the many secrets we have here. It's up to you to come here and fight the other ones out. Ti aspettiamo, a presto, ciao! Ciao, come stai? Ciao. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Carolina, che fa la barba? No. Che fa il three pointers? Ma se è il momento decisivo. Sì, no, è il momento giusto. È il momento giusto. <laughs> cioè, a Miami. Mi devo, devo fare un tatuaggio. Sì, sì. Niente, niente. Vai, mi devi eliminare. You're talking about talking about soccer. <laughs> then pretend, just pretend. Okay, pretend you're talking soccer. Pretend you're talking soccer. Pretend you're passionate about hockey, about but talk about soccer. Yeah. Oh, say soccer. Okay, okay. Instead of hockey. And then you're gonna say everything else, but just replace the word hockey with soccer. And you're good. Oh, good. I'm not a bad. <laughs> you can just face so it. Good. So I don't know good. anything about this. I'm, no, but I love the passion. I love making it up. Make it up. <laughs> Ma che cazzo fa? Bounty face me. No, That's the specialty of the Roman pizza. Its uniqueness is that it's thin. <laughs> yeah, dude, the rest of them are so good. Let's uh, let's get out. Let's get out of this apartment and um, let's hit the town. Okay, andiamo. Let's go.